Juan says this. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for those who are, who are in Christ Jesus. Three ways to overcome guilt. Number one is this. Is that you need to recognize that in Christ you are no longer condemned. You need to recognize that in Christ, if you gave your life to God, that in Christ you are no longer condemned. You're no longer condemned. In other words... That in Christ, you are no longer the boss. You are no longer the boss. Jesus is your boss. And in Christ, although you are guilty, you're not condemned. When someone is condemned, that means they are sentenced to something. And they're going to go through it. But Jesus said, I came and I paid the price so that you don't have to. I came and I took every sin and every curse so that you don't have to. Your guilt, in your guilt, you deserve to die. But Jesus said, I came in your place. I stood, I stood in your place. And I took everything so that you could be free. So when you feel guilty, let me tell you something. You are guilty, but you're not condemned. You're not condemned. In other words, there's still a chance to change. There's still a, time, a chance to keep going. When God forgives you of your sins, all you, what you really have to understand is this. It is you repenting and going forward. Woman that was caught in, the, in adultery. I believe it's in uh, John chapter 8. I'm not going to read it to you. The woman is, a, is, is caught in adultery. There's no hiding it. It's very embarrassing. And in that culture, in those times... Women were treated very poorly. The woman comes to be stoned. And what does Jesus do? He tells everyone, if whoever has no sin can cast the first stone. And they couldn't because they all knew they were sinners. He defends the girls, but everybody misses this part. But he tells her. She's by herself. He's protected her. He's forgiven her, but he tells her this. He corrects her. He says, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. In other words, I forgive you. But now it's your job to go and not go back to adultery. To go and not keep doing what you're doing. When you are in Christ, you are a new creation. And when you recognize that, it gives you the faith to keep going. But here's the thing, church. Although you are allowed to keep going, it also gives you the responsibility to not go back. When God takes you out of something, it is now your responsibility to not go back to what you were in before. Jesus loved the woman. He protected her. He forgave her. He gave her a new opportunity. But when Jesus tells her to go sin no more, it's not like this, like, ah, oh, you're, you know, a touchy. He's actually correcting her. He's telling her, you were wrong. You were sleeping with a married man. I'm forgiving you, but don't go and do it again. Don't do it again. For some of you in this room, this is, here's the thing. When God has forgiven you, he's telling you the same thing. Whether it's don't go back to those people whether it's don't go back to that place, it is you avoiding the, the things and the places and the people that have brought you down. And Jesus is trying to tell you, you need to stay away and keep going forward. For some of you, it's making a, a decision today. I can't go back there. I can't go with these people. I can't be in this toxic relationship anymore. I can't do certain things because if I do it, I already know what's going to happen. I already know what's going to happen. And then what happens is the cycle continues. We live in cycle, the cycle, the cycle, the cycle. And you can't go back to that. Jesus paid a price so that you don't have to go back to that church. Let me tell you something. Everything in Christ is so much better than the life before. So much better. 
than the life you had before. If you don't like depression, anxiety, then don't go back to the very things that fed that in the first place. The very things that fed that. Don't go back. I can't name a lot of things because I don't know your personal issues. I'm not God. I'm not omnipresent, but you do. You know exactly what you need to do. But if you've been dealing with guilt, recognize that in Christ, you are no longer condemned. So stop condemning yourself. When you constantly condemn yourself, you can't worship God like we were worshiping earlier because you're constantly condemning yourself. You can't enjoy this life that God gave you because you're constantly condemning yourself. And that's not God for you to just always be like in and out of happiness and like you're just trying to survive and you're almost like you're, you're, you're checking the time on when death comes when you're getting older. No, man, enjoy the life that God gave you, church. We are meant to enjoy God and enjoy this life, not to endure this world. Too many people are enduring this world. They're just enduring it. They're, they're, I'm, I'm just trying to live this life, Pastor Sam. Good. Enjoy it. You know one of the first things that the Lord corrected me this year in our 21 days of fasting? I was praying to God, and one of the things I was asked, I was, every year I asked the Lord, I pray for everybody, but then I also ask God, God, what is it that you want from me personally? You know one of the things God told me? And I was like, gosh, gosh, God, man, you're, you're God, but geez. He said, stop enduring life with me. He said, enjoy me. He said, I want you this year to enjoy me. And I felt the correction of the Holy Spirit because I, I realized that as I'm trying to serve God, I, I'm always like, I get in this work mode for God. I'm always working. I'm working for God. I'm working for God. I need to do this. I need to do that. And I never really stop to actually enjoy God. Enjoy my relation with him. Enjoy that I'm forgiven. Enjoy that he loves me. Enjoy the fact that I get to be with you every single Sunday and Tuesday night. Enjoy it. So he correct, the Holy Spirit corrected me on that. He said, enjoy, he told me, enjoy me. Enjoy me. Number two is...